GitHub Universe is coming soon. A ton of stuff about stable diffusion, the coolest AI art tool on the block, some throwback JavaScript effects, and a pick of the week that combines two of my favorite things, data science and celebrity gossip. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub. And this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and the coolest open source projects of the week. As always, please like and subscribe to keep getting alerts when we put these videos out. My shirt this week is from Videodrome, an amazing indie video store from my hometown of Atlanta, Georgia. And I love a good video store, so few exist anymore. And I'm beyond happy that Videodrome is still around. Okay, so let's move on from cool store info and into some cool news, which is my awkward transition to announce the GitHub Universe tickets are now available. So GitHub Universe is our annual global developer event that covers cloud and security and AI, and of course, community. And this year's event is going to be hybrid, meaning we'll be online and we'll be in person. And it'll be at the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts in San Francisco, California on November 9th and 10th. So I've got details linked below about where you can learn more and more details will be released in the coming weeks, um, you know, uh, teasing speakers and sessions. If you wanna join us in person, and I'm gonna be there at YBC, you might wanna snag tickets uh, now while they are 20% off for early bird buyers. As always, we'll still have great content available to everyone online, but I'm super excited to see people in person too. Links are down below. Also check out the helpful form letter that the team composed if you're trying to convince your boss to send you. It's like a copy paste deal, it's actually pretty cool. And if you do come to GitHub Universe and you see me, please say hello. I love meeting people that use our products and watch my silly videos. Moving on, I also wanted to give a shout out to Derek Stolle, who wrote a great series of blog posts this week on the GitHub blog, going into details about Git's database internals. And I'm gonna be honest, some of the stuff did go over my head, but I really love learning more about how Git's data structures work. So I've got a link to Derek's series down below, but if you really like to nerd out over this sort of stuff, it's definitely a recommendation for me to read it. And I'm just gonna give a shout out uh, and a note that Derek will be at Git Merge in a few weeks, talking about all five parts of his series. Git Merge is September 14th and 15th in Chicago, and I've got more details on that event linked down below too. I'm also gonna be at Git Merge, so if you see me or you see Derek, please say hello to us. All right, now I wanna talk about one of the coolest new releases that I've seen in I don't know, like eons? So last week, Stability AI released the public version of their amazing machine learning model, Stable Diffusion. And Stable Diffusion is an AI model that can generate images from text um, and, and using natural language prompts, and it can also upscale images alongside those prompts. So it's similar to some of the other solutions that we've seen like OpenAI's Dolly 2, but with the added benefit of being open sourced under the Creative ML Open Rail M license. And there are some hosted variants available for people to try out now, but because the code is hosted on GitHub, people are already running this on their own machines too, like even consumer hardware. So right now you really do need an NVIDIA GPU for this to work well, uh, although there are some forks that have made modifications that work on Apple Silicon Macs, and some um, people have done some work to get it running on certain AMD GPUs. I've got a bunch of that stuff linked down below. But here's the thing, the results that people are getting out of this are just incredible. Developer Andy Salerno wrote an amazing blog post showing off how he was able to create this amazing image in just 15 steps. And to give you some context, this was the image that he gave Stable Diffusion to upscale, and then he gave it some prompts. Simon Willison had a really great blog post analyzing some of the models and the tools too, and he pointed out uh, this example from Reddit user argaman 123 who created these two images using this and this prompt. A distant futuristic city full of tall buildings inside a huge transparent glass dome in the middle of a barren desert full of large dunes. Sun rays, art station dark sky full of stars with a shiny sun, massive scale, fog, highly detailed, cinematic, colorful. My mind is blown and the possibilities for this kind of thing are really endless. I'm super excited uh, for what models like Stable Diffusion and Dolly 2 will mean for democratizing art. 
In the links down below, I have links to the main Stable Diffusion repo, a link to a forked repo that makes some modifications that make it easier to run on your own machines, and Simon and Andy's blog posts. I really, really love this. Okay, so while we're talking about cool things, I have to mention Tim Holman's cursor effects repo, which recreates cursor effects from the 90s web of my youth, but in modern JavaScript. Look, are these things that you should put on your modern web pages and web apps? Probably not. Am I glad that Tim has preserved the mistakes of my youth for the kids today? Absolutely. I've got a link to Tim's repo in the links down below. Speaking of things that I love, Taylor Swift, who people who follow me on Twitter or Instagram, or who have watched the various iterations of this show over the years, know I adore, like I'm a huge Swifty. And she announced that her next album titled Midnights will be available on October 21st. There are like four different vinyl colored variations and several color CDs. There's even a cassette variant, uh, cassette variant available for pre-order now. And as someone who owns all seven, I think it's seven vinyl variants of uh, folklore, I've obviously pre-ordered everything. Uh, I even got the tape for good measure. So see you in October, Swifties. All right, and now it's time for my pick of the week. So this pick was actually suggested to me by my boss, Martin Woodward, and Martin, Thank you for pointing this out to me because genuinely it does combine two of my favorite things, which are data science and celebrity gossip. All right, some background. You might have heard that Leonardo DiCaprio is single again, having broken up with his longtime girlfriend after more than four years. My thoughts are with them both during this difficult time, but I do have to note something that notable that just happened to Leo's ex back in June. She turned 25. Now, this might not be a big deal, but as avid Leo watchers have noticed, Leo seems to have a thing where he doesn't like to date girls who are older than 25. It's weird, right? Uh, there are lots and lots of memes about this fact, but the most famous might be this chart that Reddit user Trust Little Brother created back in 2019. Okay, but what does this have to do with code, Christina? You're now screaming at your computer screen. Well, I'm getting there. I'm glad you asked. Okay, so data scientist and data visualization goddess Tanya Shapiro recreated that famous chart using ggplot and related ggplot libraries in R. This is very cool. And she's actually helpfully included the code that she used to get it all working in her GitHub repo of some of her um, data visualization projects. And Tanya, I salute you. This is excellent work. Some of her past pop culture inspired projects include a Westworld attribute matrix, and she recreated an excellent Selling Sunset meme. I love this. So I've got a link to Tanya's repo linked down below. As I said, this is great work, and it shows that you can definitely do anything with Gplot, anything except convince Leonardo DiCaprio to date someone old enough to rent a car. All right, let me know your favorite data visualizations or your favorite Leo memes in the comments down below. I'd also love your thoughts on any of the other stories we covered this week. That's gonna do it for me. If you liked this episode, go ahead and give us a like. It does help us out. And go ahead and subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for all your nerd needs. See you next time.